In this guest lecture for the University of Eindhoven, I talk about the power of storytelling and how it relates to future studies. My plans for the weekend is probably that we go to a park nearby, Park Randebroek. I don't know if you're, yeah, yeah, yeah in Amersfoort. <laughs> And it's a, you have a, like a little nice stream and uh, there's also some little hills over there and there's a nice park and probably we get a coffee to go. And uh, in September I uh, became father, so I think we also got a stroller and then take our little baby boy for a little walk and then also get a coffee to go. And I hopefully, hopefully it's also quite sunny and I get some, uh, instead of having these long trousers, I can have a, a t-shirt and short trousers. It's going to be about 17 degrees. Oh, that's, that sounds good. But what actually happened um, uh, when you shared your story to go to a zoo, uh, when I shared my story to go to a park, that you probably all have to like, in your mind's eye, you have an idea of this. You know this park, but you, you see a park, you maybe see me in, in, in short trousers or a t-shirt and walking behind a stroller. And that's quite, that's quite extraordinary for us we as humans we are yeah one of the only species that can envision the future with the help of stories and i in that regard i also like this quote by albert einstein imagination is more important than knowledge we as humans we are very smart uh, also if you're a master student of course but i think you also need to be aware of imagination and in that regard, I like the work of uh, uh, Yuval Noah Harari, Professor Yuval Noah Harari. He wrote the books uh, um, Homo Deus, which is more about brain chips, um, but also the book uh, Sapiens, and also 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. But one of my main takeaways of the book uh, Sapiens is that we as humans, how did we become a dominant species on Earth? Uh, also not the Neanderthals, but we Homo sapiens is that we can could col collaborate with each other, also in mixing formations. So we, I can co collaborate with you for one project and then with you, and there are not a lot, we are the only species that can do that. But also is one of these uh, factors is that we can tell each other stories. And back in, the, back in the day, that would have a benefit. For example, if I would tell you like, ooh, down the stream, near the crazy tree over there, and then behind the boulder, there's a lion. So we can warn each other for danger, but we can also say, oh, on the Great Plain, there's a mammoth, and uh, if you go there and I do this action, then we maybe can uh, kill this animal and then have a giant feast and uh, festivities. So we can use the power of story to come up with an idea of a concept of a situation in the future. And that also, according to, Har to Harari, is like that, that gave us a superpower as a homo sapiens. And still, we live in a world which is full of stories. For example, uh, nation states, uh, these are stories. Uh, borders, th these are all stories we invent and we also believe in it. And according to Harari, the biggest story of us as a human species is money. Like we all believe that when I give you uh, like a, uh, a coin, that it rep represents some value. And we all trust that, 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 it's, yeah, that, that we can, can use it and buy something for it. So we, yeah, we thrive on stories, we as human species. And also to give you a couple of examples, uh, you, for example, uh, Steve Jobs and Apple, yeah, they make great products. I also am an avid uh, Apple user, but in a sense, it's also about the story they tell about their products and the identity that a lot of people feel with the brand of Apple. And one other example concerning the use of story is the, uh, the story of Elizabeth Holmes. Uh, maybe you, you, you know this story. Um, I read the book. It's a great book. I think one of the best books I ever read called Bad Blood. And that's the story of Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos. And Theranos had the promise, which is related to quantified self, that with one droplet of blood, you can do like 200 um, health uh, analysis of all kinds of diseases. Well, actually it was a scam and you can see, you can read it in the book. There's also a podcast about it, there's a documentary and there's also now a series called The Dropout. So whatever you like, you can choose it. I would highly, um, I said, favor this, uh, this, uh, this story. But also she, she, 
she used also she used the power of story to. She also wanted to resemble Steve Jobs in the way she she, she dressed and and she talked, and her story was so powerful that she attracted a lot of investors and also a media coverage, for example, here in Forbes. But the uh, the, um, the example of Jobs and also Holmes are business related. But also in our day and age, I should also mention uh, Vladimir Putin. He also has a story, and maybe all, of course also with uh, fake news and disinformation, but the story he tells to the inhabitants of Russia is a, a certain story about how the people in Ukraine behave and how they are. And they, so he uses also this story to, yeah, to, to mobilize uh, his own in inhabitants, but also his soldiers, as you can say. But you can also use story for good. Uh, I like the work of uh, the uh, Moral Manifesto, where they say, well, we should get rid of the neoliberal capitalism story we are all in right now, but we also have to think of uh, future un unborn um, generations, also not more than life, uh, more than humans, life forms, all other life forms, and also you have a sort of deep evolution, evolutionary time perspective when we look into the future. And like I said, also one method I really like is about personal personas, of future personas. So instead of having like a factual um, uh, description of the future, you re it really makes you think about how does um, a day in this university in 10 years look, for example, how, how uh, are the classrooms still the same? Um, what kind of technology do we use? Is uh, because of climate change, is, is there the sea? And, uh, it really makes you think about, yeah, um, how, how, how does a person live in that future? And so this, uh, this method by uh, Alessandro Fernacchi, it contains of a couple of steps, like what is the fact sheet of this future? And also what does a day in life mean? And also how, how can you make that story come alive? And that's the um, yeah, couple of tips I have for, for that is that when you make such a story, you, uh, I would advise you to make it personal. Um, also use a lot of senses. How does it feel? How does it taste? How does, uh, what kind of sounds do you hear? Uh, and also use emotion like uh, uh, anger or bewilderment or excitement or hope. These are all elements you can use to make a story, a future story more personal and also yeah, it makes you remember that story for the better. Mm -hmm.